Hello and welcome back to IXL Tutorials. This is Mr. Duffick, and today we are doing IXL K3, which is ASA and AAS theorems, which means angle side angle and angle angle side. So you should be familiar with side 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 and side angle side uh, congruence theorems by now, and these are just an extension of that. So side 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 said that if we knew all three sides of two triangles, then uh, we know for sure that they are uh, congruent, assuming they're all, they all match up. Side angle side, same deal. If we had a side followed by an angle followed by a side between two triangles, we know they're congruent. Here we have an angle followed by a side followed by an angle. If we know the angles are congruent and the side uh, uh, that is sandwiched between those two angles is congruent across two triangles, then we know they're, the whole triangle itself is congruent. Same thing with uh, we have an angle and angle followed by a side. So uh, very similar to K1 here, they're just going to give us a series of triangles. We have to determine which two are congruent and then write out the congruent statements for each. So we'll look for tick marks and see uh, which ones are congruent first. So these two triangles automatically have a single ring for an angle followed by a side with two tick marks each. And then our second uh, angle here with two rings, so these are going to be the congruent one. There's one tick mark here, uh, doesn't match up anywhere over here, so that one's out. So now we just have to write the congruent statement for these. So we'll start with the angle, um, the the corner with the angle in it, the one the uh, one ring angle. So we'll start here with G. And remember the congruent statements have to match up. So if I write G for the left side, that means I have to write A for the other side. Okay, then we'll go down to the uh, two ring angle, which is going to be E on the left side and C on the right. And then we'll finish up at F over here. And then the last point is going to be B over here. All right, as easy as that. We'll do another one. Okay, let's look for the same uh, type of markings here. Immediately you see you have a tick uh, and then two angles, a tick, and then the two angles there. This one has two tick marks, so that one's out. It's going to be these two triangles. So now we just got to write out the statement. We'll start down here at the point, then move up, and then move right. Since both triangles are oriented the same way, it's pretty easy. So we'll go D, B, C, and then we'll go R, S, Q. Remember, very, very important, the congruent statements have to match up. Uh, each corresponding angle or side has to match up between the left and the right side of the congruent statement. Okay, so you get the idea. Um, angle, angle, side theorem. We have, this one has two tick marks, the other ones do not, so these two are going to be the congruent ones. We'll start with the single angle, and then work our way down to uh, the point after the tick marks. So we'll start with S, then go to R, and then go to Q, meaning we have to go D down to C over to B. Okay. Okay, and so this is already at 50, um, and the problems are not going to change much from here. This is the exact same kind of problem we've seen even at the lowest level. So this is where I'll stop the video, study hard, stay safe, and I will see you for the next IXL tutorial. Goodbye.